Hi. Hi. My name. My name is May Klingler. It's May Klingler. Hi. My name is May Klingler. This is You Can Do That. And this is You Can Do That. That's hard. I know. <laughs> Did you do this with your head? No, I try not to move my head that <laughs> much. Blimey. My name is May Klingler. And this is You Can Do That. Yeah, that's pretty good. And today we're going to talk to Kate Glasheen. And today we're going to talk to Kate Glasheen. Yeah, and that's me. And that's her. <laughs> right, and that's me. Right. <laughs> Yes! I'm Kate Lachine and I'm a dialect coach and a dialect is basically the way a certain person sounds because they're from a particular region or area of the world or of the country they're in. There are a lot of different dialects and a dialect coach teaches a person who speaks in one particular dialect to speak in another dialect. So, for example, let's say we have an actor who is from Ireland. So they sound something like this, and they sound like they're from Ireland, right? They, they sound different from Americans. And uh, let's say that person is going over to England, and that person's going to be in a show in England, um, or even doing an English play in Ireland, and that person's going to have to sound like they're from England. I would teach a person who sounds like this to sound like this, and to sound more like they're from, from England, which is just across the water, but sounds very, very different from Ireland. G'day mate, I'm an Aussie from Sydney. Cheerio, this is what we call Cockney dialect, it's from England, specifically a neighbourhood in London, and you might recognise it as Bert from Mary Poppins. I'm from London as well, but I happen to speak in RP, or Received Pronunciation. Hey, I'm from London too. This is what we call estuary, at least in the States, but there's a lot of different ways of speaking it. It just means I'm from London, where there's a river called the Thames. So, I'm from England as well, and this is a Geordie accent. Who knew we had that many different accents in one tiny country? I'm from Moscow, in Russia. Uh, it's very, very cold here. Hey y'all, I'm from the American South. There are actually a lot of different American Southern accents, and one of the key ways you can tell them apart is whether or not they use their R's. Some American Southern accents use their R's, and some American Southern accents don't use their R's. And up north, we sound a little bit different. For example, in Minnesota, where we have longer O sounds and uh, a slightly harder R sound. Welcome to Scotland. This is what we'd call a Glaswegian accent. And I'm really close by, but we sound a wee bit different here in Ireland. And now we're in Boston, and when you do a Boston accent, you gotta say, go park the car and have it yard. In New York, you got a bit more of a punchy sound. It's a little more sudden, a little more direct. It just sounds, uh, it's not quite as smooth as some of the other dialects you've heard. Guten Tag, I'm from Germany, and this dialect is a little harder than the ones you've heard, because all the consonants are very different from the ones you've heard before. Bonjour, I am from France. And the sounds here are a little more linked together than the other dialects you've heard. And here we are back in Cincinnati, where we say please if we didn't understand what you said. There are hundreds of dialects across the world that we haven't even touched on, from continents we haven't even talked about. These are the ones I use the most when I'm coaching actors for theatrical performances. One of the main places to start with an accent is where it's placed, and all accents are placed a little bit differently in your mouth and, and face. So as an American, when I talk, I feel it a lot more in my nose, up in this region of my face. But when I go into my British accent, can you hear that it changes a bit? Um, what we call the resonance changes. Instead of feeling it up here in my nose, I feel it more coming straight out through my mouth. There's less pinging up in this area where there are all these bones and sinus cavities and things nothing else is getting in the way, it's coming out straight. It doesn't have the same resonance, it has a different feel and a different sound than it does in my American accent. If I'm, if I'm speaking to you in British like this and then I go, um, like you can hear my resonance <laughs> shift, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is true of a lot of accent. Pretty much every accent has at least a slightly different placement and feel to it, in addition to the different sounds that it has. Very nice, so we've got lot cloth, cloth, lot lot cloth, cloth. thought. Oh. Yeah. I used to get so, so nervous. I thought nobody cared what I had to say. And I knew that wasn't actually true. I knew it wasn't true. And once I said to myself out loud, 
that's ridiculous. Of course they want to know what you have to say. That really helped me to, to move on from that and my voice has strengthened because of it. Girls can be creative. Girls can confidently use their voices um, to say what they want to and help others say what they want to. And they can, they can be very influential in helping others find their own voice, whether it's their actual physical vocal sound or what they want to say with that, with that voice. This was a very fun interview. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me, Kate. <laughs> that, was, that was nothing. That was good. Nobody talks like that.